Hi, my name is Jeff Shawhan, and I'd like to welcome you to my studio, Tricycle Studios. Um, typically what we do is we train triathletes and cyclists here on um, cycling. Um, when you come in here, it's a wonderful facility that offers uh, uh, multi-entertainment while somebody's training. When you come in, you'll see some of the trainers themselves, the Wahoo Kickers, which are state-of-the-art kickers. Um, what they do is they train athletes via the computer, so everything's a computerized program when they come in. Um, they'll come in, they'll also do, typically do some uh, rehab here, they'll do some rolling and stretching after their workouts, which we provide as well. Um, we have everything from a train, uh, changing room to um, um, entertainment that's provided by a, a large screen uh, television and also a projection screen as well. Um, athletes also can change uh, uh, equipment on their bike here um, and also some bike repair once a week as well. Um, eventually we'll start incorporating um, presentations from uh, guest triathletes as well and uh, do some demonstrations and uh, informational sessions as well. So welcome to the studio. I'm Michael Burke and this is Money Talks. Hi, welcome to Money Talks. I'm Michael Burke, and today we are at Tricycle Studios with Jeff Shawhan, founder and owner. And uh, let's give the location. This is inside the Racine Business Center at 1405 16th Street, basically a block long, really amazing old old building. Um, and Jeff, you're also an instructor, an art instructor at Concordia University, yeah. and uh, a 3D instructor. And um, you are also a triathlete. In get into yes. that in a second so this is so this is a studio for really serious athletes uh, we, we should say at the outset people who run triathlons at various distances exactly it's one of those things that people when they come in they're um, uh, pretty well committed to the programs and pretty well committed to racing so when they come in they're ready to go and then it's really just fine-tuning that, uh, that elite athlete yeah, so this is not a place people come in just to uh, just to keep in shape because you're way beyond that level. Why don't you tell some of the distances involved in, in triathlons for those who may not um, know? It, it really varies by what that person wants to do too. So the first uh, one is called a sprint and that's really short distance. It's about a 500 yard swim, um, three, uh, three mile run and then probably about an 18 mile bike. And then you start ramping up. Racine has one of those Ironman races which is a half Ironman, it's a 70.3 and you're really talking um, a mile and a half swim and then uh, a uh, 56 mile bike ride and then a half marathon, 13.1 run after that. And then you ramp it up to the full Ironman which is sort of the creme de la creme of the race world um, in triathlon. And again that's that uh, 2.4 mile swim, 112 bike and then you get that lovely marathon at the end of 26. Okay, I'm tired. I need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you sit on this, we're going to put you to work. So, yeah. um, let me ask the obvious question at this point. Why, clearly, that is so far beyond what a person needs to do to stay in shape. So, I don't know if you want to speak for others in the world of triathletes, uh, triathlons, but why do you do them? Why do people do them? I, I, I think a lot of people think of it as a racing from the outside, but when you're in the inside of it, it's really the training. Um, I enjoy the most, and most of the athletes enjoy that. There's really some structure to that, structure to the life, and it's a lifestyle. I mean, it's talking amongst people and sharing that amongst, and that's why the studio works out really well. It's because people come in there and share that type of experience with each other during the training, during the 36 weeks, and even off the season time as well. And you made it clear to me when I did a story on your studio that there's a real, a real scientific method for, at least for you, to the training. Um, but how long have you been doing triathlon? Um, this will be my fourth year coming up. Um, this will be my third year being competitive on the level of the full Ironman. Um, it's one of those things I first tried it out and uh, tried out with a sprint race and it, it went semi-well. Um, it was a bit more than I thought it was because I thought, oh, short distance, this won't be so tough. But it was tough and mm -hmm. then just sort of ramping it up from there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so why don't you talk about the training regimen? Well, let's talk about two things, the apparatus, the, the equipment, and then the program that you run. Well, starting out, um, obviously working in three different disciplines require three different sets of skills and also three different sets of equipment. Um, obviously swimming is probably the least expensive. Shoes get fairly expensive when you're talking for the high quality shoes, anywhere between 90 and 130 $150 for the shoes. And you go through those rather rapidly. I think I go through about six, seven pairs in just training a year. Wow. Um, so that's there. But then you get into the bikes and that's where the expense really comes in. I mean the bikes can range from a typical road bike, which would, this would be a beginning, you know, sort of start up, um, anywhere up to $10,000, $12,000 for the bikes. Um, the wheels alone for some of these, these aren't the wheel sets that they would race in, but those can get up on uh, three, four thousand dollars for the wheels themselves. And, and what are, um, <clears throat> talk about the resistance and the types of um, trainers. Oh sure, this right here is um, sort of the top of the line trainer that they have. It's called a Wahoo Kicker. And what it is, is it's run, it's computerized and adds resistance to the ride. So if you're trying to emulate a ride that's outside, these are perfect for that because on the profile that you have on a, on a ride, you can actually feel the hills and everything that it's putting you through and the downhills and the flat areas that you'd be riding typically outside. And that's more sophisticated and what's the other system then? The other system would be a, what's called a fluid trainer. Um, that when you put the resistance on by changing the gears of the mm -hmm. bike, typically mm -hmm. like you would do on the outside as well mm -hmm. too, changing the gears. But that you're creating tension with. This again, it takes care of that and it takes care of all your training for you. So you want to show us what those computerized programs look like? Oh sure. Uh, the nice thing about this is the unit is uh, Bluetooth wireless so that the person mm -hmm. would be able to uh, uh, run off an iPad or run off an iPhone, and then typically what they would do is they would run their uh, their workout. On it. And and so the the higher the these are spikes where you hit hills. Exactly, they call them intervals, and those are what that's where a lot of the really strength work is done at those points. And the points below the white line, the FTP line, that's where the person's really building endurance. And because you told me that actually, if you ride outside in the Racine area, you can't get this kind of a workout because oh, we don't have a lot of hills. Most definitely, I think the closest you'll get to any hills, you go down around Pets Fry and Springs, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. But those are really just almost moguls to a point. Mm -hmm. Madison, you have a little bit more. Um, hilly areas and uh, but still nothing that you can that you can do at this level. And, and there are various programs it's not just this one. Almost perfect definitely within this uh, program right here there are probably 300 or so stored with an iPad. Now you were talking about this the, there's a white line that runs through there it's not going to show up very well but what does that white line represent? Yeah that's FTP that's functional threshold power um, that's set up each individual rider so what the rider would do is come in and do a test and the test would set their FTP. That's a baseline for their training and then what we do is we take that FTP and, and then adjust it to their to their training so that they only do so much above and then they do most of it just below that line. And what happens when you're above it? What happens in the body when you're below it? When you're above that you're working really hard your body starts to produce lactic acid in its body and that's where you get sore the next day. So that's why you don't want to spend a lot of time above that level. Below that level, your body's able to get rid of the lactic acid and the muscles, and then what happens is you're not sore the next day. Because tomorrow, typically, you end up running or biking again and swimming again. Um, so your body has to get some sense of recovery after every day. And I know you approach this in a way that you said you are, you're never sore even after one of these competitions. Right? No, I, I think I get more sore of snow car. So. Is that right? <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Um, how many how many hours a week and how many days a week does a person uh, would a person use this? At this level, you're talking six days a week of training, you have one day of recovery, and it's really important. Typically, you spread that out between three workouts per each area during the week, and then one will be really high in the area of the volume that you're the doing. areas being running, swimming, and, exactly. and biking. Yep, and then the other two would start to step down just a little bit, so you'd have a long run, a long bike during that week. And you try and separate them away from each other so you're not overburdening the legs. And what's your what's your total number of hours trained in all areas in a week? So when you start out, typically in the first couple months, you'll move somewhere around 18, 19 hours. And during the peak time, which is about four weeks out from your main race, you'll end up somewhere around 24 to 6 hours. 24 to 26 hours. So that's a half-time job. Training. Oh, definitely. It's nice to have off during the summer. Yeah. Um, finally, the uh, I know you have 
various forms of entertainment that you can bring into this studio. Oh, sure. What, what are some of those? Um, one of the things that I know a lot of the athletes like is they'll play uh, Netflix on the projected screen and they'll watch it while they're riding a movie. Um, typically, you can get around a four-hour ride on a Saturday, so to entertain them, mm -hmm. they can turn on the television and run that. Um, music is fantastic, mm -hmm. but also the camaraderie that we have just riding together really helps. Um, uh, really helps by the time. And, and you also said that you can actually race people online. Oh, sure. A live person. Sure. One of those um, software programs or apps that they have, you can actually race in, let's say you wanted to race part of the Tour de France this year, you can go ahead and download that onto the iPad and it'll put you through the race. Mm -hmm. and, and you showed me one where you could literally be, or not literally, but be riding through the streets of San Francisco seeing oh, the sure, real... Oh, sure, sure. And then real, let's say uh, you have a friend in... Uh, Manitowoc or something like that. You could start it simultaneously and you could race on a computer against that person so you would uh, you'd be racing. Yeah. Um, really quickly gives people some idea of the prices. Um, prices range by the sort of membership that the person signs up for. We do offer day rides so somebody could come in typically for just under ten dollars and ride for an hour, hour and a half and then you ramp up to a full membership would be around three hundred dollars for the full year which I think if you break that down per month. It doesn't sound bad at all. So. Yeah. Well, Jeff Shawhan, Tricycle Studios, good luck with this. I know it's off to a good start. Um, thanks to our producer today, Scott Anderson. I'm Michael Burke. Thanks for watching.